Well, it's Tuesday and you know what that means. It's another Domo Lunch and Learn. And this time I am joined by the man, the myth, the less, the legend, as they call him around here at Domo, Dan Hendrickson. Thank you so much for being a part. We're going to talk a little bit about how to access Domo anywhere. Might also get into a little bit of Domo everywhere, but there are more ways to access Domo than having the specific Domo Everywhere platform, as we've discussed over the week. So we're really excited to kind of jump right in. I know uh, for myself, learning the platform as I have over the last several months, uh, I really tried to give a lot of time to figuring out, well, how do I allow people in the organization that that may be partners or that may be outside of my organization that I want to give specific data to? How in the world am I ever going to find a way to share that with them? And I think Domo Everywhere is a great solution, which we'll dive into and get into. But you're also going to talk today about things like brand kit and PowerPoint plugins, campaigns. Uh, there'll be a lot of stuff today that we dive into. And Dan is our guy. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us today on the live stream. Hey, thanks for letting me back in front of the camera. <laughs> Always happy to be here. You know what? I always tell uh, Mark Booth, and those of you who have seen a couple of live streams, maybe familiar with Mark Booth. He did some Don't Lose a stuff a couple of years ago, but I always tell him that, uh, you know, I'll do it as long as somebody doesn't ever kick me off camera. And, uh, and they probably needed to a long time ago, um, but it's exciting to, to bring you on to do these. We're going to see Dan a lot regularly around these parts on the Domo live stream as he's agreed to kind of go through. Uh, some of these really cool features in Domo that we feel a lot of people need to get their hands on. And, um, you know, we had a discussion about, do we start with kind of Domo everywhere? You know, that's a, that might be a paid feature for some. We're, we're looking at how that best, you know, matches what we're trying to do here and help people accomplish their goals in Domo. So um, we're going to start on just kind of how do we let people, you know, access information? How do we give them information from our Domo instance uh, publicly. And I can't wait to see what Dan has in store for us today. As always, as you're watching the live stream today, make sure you're commenting, uh, make sure you're suggesting, liking, subscribing, all of the things. And if you do have a question or comment, throw that down below in the comment section or the live chat section of this live stream. We'll be glad to jump in and answer those. Dan has graciously agreed uh, to let us jump in at any point during his presentation uh, Bring it on. To, to give him a uh, to give him a little bit of, uh, we want to keep him on his toes here at the at the Domo Lunch and Learn. So super excited, Dan. We've got lots of links to share, lots of resources to share. You've got a lot of information to share. I have talked enough. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way, right, as they say, and and let you do your thing. But again, thanks so much for for being here and being a part of the live stream. Hey, Eddie, thanks for having me, and and for everybody here watching, uh, appreciate you spending a little bit of your time this afternoon with us. Um, to, to give a little bit more context around what we're going to talk about, in, in the time I've been here at Domo, I've been here about eight years, um, we find that, that uh, Domo users are consistently looking for answers, right? They want answers uh, from their data, and, and oftentimes those are to answer questions that people outside of the organization have, right? Whether you're a media agency who's wanting to share reporting to clients, I mean, there's... the I could rattle on and on and on all the different use cases where you've got information that you want to share with somebody outside of the company. Um, and so today I want to talk about some of the ways that, uh, that can make that a little bit easier and also make sure that, that when you do it, uh, you're doing it on brand and you're doing it as efficiently as possible. So we know that it's important that when uh, you put something out there, you want it to look and feel like, like something that came from your company and uh, you don't want to, you don't want to spend too much time uh, getting that put together. So, um, I'm going to assume at, at this point that that everybody here is is comfortable with the fact that you can export uh, dashboards or, or content in Domo down down as a PowerPoint or a PDF, and you got scheduled reports. Um, I'm, I'm not going to cover those things today, other than we can drop a link to those in there. But I'm going to assume uh, that that you've got that level of of comfort with distributing content internally. And, and really, what we're going to talk about today is I want to talk about this new PowerPoint plugin. Uh, we're going to talk about brand kit, make sure that you can have the content that you put out there on point with your brand. Uh, we're going to talk about a really cool tool called campaigns. It can allow you to send content from Domo automatically uh, from your own email servers, uh, branded the way you want it to. And then we're going to talk about uh, embedding cards and dashboards, both publicly and privately, and show some examples of that. So 
uh, enough of me talking. I'm going to jump in. And the first thing I want to show you is we're going to take a look at this PowerPoint plugin. This is really cool. Um, let's see here. What I've done is I've just got a, this is Domo's, if, if you've been around Domo for a while, uh, this is our 2022 uh, presentation template. Uh, but wanted to show you just exactly how quickly um, you can take content that you've got in Domo and, and put it into PowerPoint, whether that's for external distribution, whether it's for a meeting you're going to, uh, whatever it might be. We find that oftentimes folks want to put content and narratives alongside that. Um, and this Domo plugin is great. It works for both uh, Windows and Mac. So you can see here, um, I've hit the Domo button and I'll... Uh, I've already got the Stravello environment that I'm going to use here, but you would just log into your Domo instance, pops up in a browser, uh, you punch your credentials in, and then you're authenticated. And you got the ability to insert uh, both dashboards and data, projects and tasks, uh, and whatnot. So what I'm going to focus on is, is just this dashboards button, right? When I hit that, you can see this little window here it shows me the different dashboards I've got, um, and you can see all the different cards and whatnot. So if I want to add, this QA pass rate, and oops, it, it popped up in a in a separate window. I'm guessing you guys can't see. Let me adjust this super quick. Um, bear with me here. Here we go. Uh, here's our, our PowerPoint uh, pop-up window. Um, I can choose to display the card or, or the data. Um, I can include metadata, like when the data set last ran, um, you know, you've got a, a host of things here, any filter views that I've got saved on there, right? So I'm thinking of, of you ad agencies and whatnot that have got a lot of uh, information you report out on. You've got pre-saved sets of filters. You can apply those here. And once I hit import card, I'm sorry about the, the toggling of the screen share here. I'm going to go back to sharing the PowerPoint. Uh, you can see that, that that image of that card is, is here on the slide, right? So I can, I can size it. I can wrap content around it. Um, I can do whatever I want to. But the neat thing is it's on my Domo PowerPoint, right? So your, your company's uh, PowerPoint template. And then whenever you need to, you can come in here and just refresh the data, right? So let's pretend that this is something that you use uh, for a weekly meeting, a monthly meeting with a client, whatever that might be, um, you've got all of your cards, all of your different uh, information displayed in here. You can just come in and hit refresh. And just like that, um, within just a couple of seconds, your PowerPoint's updated with all the latest and greatest information. So uh, for those of you that are going uh, analog, so to speak, um, with, with taking things offline, the PowerPoint plugin is, is, a really, is a really great tool that you can use to help uh, distribute that content and do it quickly um, and, and keep it current. I'm going to shift directions just a little bit here. Um, and I'm going to share out my browser. And the next thing I want to talk to you about, let's make sure I get the right one here. All right. Perfect. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is, is brand kit, right? Now brand kit is a really neat tool. Um, I talked about uh, the realization that you want to make sure that as you're putting content out, that it looks and feels uh, like your company and, and things that you're used to. And, and BrandKit allows us to do that in a few different ways, right? Now, if this isn't on for you, reach out to your account team. Um, we, can, we can get a trial of that turned on for you, but there's a couple of aspects to it that I'm going to speak to. Um, hey, Dan. Hey, yeah. Dan, before you before we dive into brand kit, we did have a question uh, from our good friend, Elliot, uh, Ellie Bot, Elliot. apparently on, <laughs> on YouTube, uh, Elliot Leonard. Um, it looks like you're on a Mac. So, again, there there are some probably some differences between operating systems here. <laughs> are are the new Microsoft Office plugins uh, available for both Windows or Mac or uh, will they only work for Mac as the demo showed just a second ago? Yeah, yeah, they absolutely work on both uh, Windows and Mac, and they work in the browser-based variants, right? So if you're if you're doing the Office 365 thing, um, it'll it'll work in the browser-based stuff as well. So Elabot, Elliot, uh, whatever we're calling you, um, work, works great on both <laughs> platforms. 
<laughs> well, thanks, Thank Elliot, for joining question. in on the conversation. Anybody that also has any questions or comments, absolutely. Make sure you put those in the live chat down below or the comments section, wherever you may be watching. We'll make sure we'll try to get to those uh, as we go through. So thanks, Dan, for jumping in on that. Apologies for, for cutting you off. We'll go back to Hey, break. no worries. No worries, Eddie. Uh, keep it up and, and keep the questions coming. Um, so a couple things I want to show you really quick on brand kit. You can style the, the login screen, right? So we, we've got a really cool image here that, uh, that shows up, but you can set your typeface. We've got a series of these we're, we're continually adding, but, um, a, a lot of the look and feel of things is, is related to the typeset that's used. So, um, you've got the ability to, to control the typeface and then also chart colors. And this is a really big one, right? Um, Every everybody out there has got their brand colors. Uh, Domo has got our default stuff that we want to run with. Uh, we we think that looks pretty good. That's what you're used to seeing here. If I go look at this dashboard, um, this is the the color palette that that you all are are used to. Um, but with Brand Kit, you can see we've got a whole bunch of different palettes created, and um, we'll actually edit this one so you can get a feel for how it comes together. But what's neat is, is Domo allows you to enter the color code uh, for different colors. Um, you can lock those, but, but it automatically builds gradients around these main hues. And there's a whole bunch of things that we won't necessarily dig into today uh, where it's showing you hue and chroma. And uh, you can set your indicator colors, right? When something's uh, moving up, what color is that? If it's negative, uh, what, what does that look like? Um, you can specify the, the patterns that these colors show up in. Um, you, can, you can specify how your period over period stuff looks. And then this even gives you the ability, and I absolutely love this um, because this is things that a lot of folks don't think about, um, to see the different charts down here and allow you to apply a bunch of different colors um, or series to that, right? Here's a pie chart with 25 values, for example, and lets you see, you know, hey, how easy is it to tell the difference between, you know, like item three and item 23, right? They they look like pretty similar colors. Um, so it gives you a preview of that and then even allows you to simulate different vision deficiencies and give you some information about it, right? Um, so you can, you can click on that and, and you know, if, if accessibility is a big thing for you, um, you know, you've got an audience that suffers from some of those vision deficiencies. Uh, we we allow you to see exactly what it's going to look like for for those for those users. So, the the second thing I wanted to hit on there, and in, in making sure that that your uh, content you're sharing is on point, is making sure that your charts look and feel like your brand. Uh, in the case of of Stravello, and let's we can just show you exactly how it plays through. We'll apply this Stravello palette, and in an instant. Um, you know, the, the content that, that I've got is here, it's applied and it, it looks like Stravello. Uh, one last thing relative to brand kit that I want to share is the ability to customize email headers, right? So as Domo generates outbound, you know, system notifications, so to speak, um, you can apply your own HTML to the header and footer. Um, not going to go through the time of, of sending a, a, a test email here, but just know that you can you can make those headers and footers look and feel like your brand. We've heard from customers that get internal communications. They may not they may not know that it's something that they need to take a look at because it doesn't look like it's something that came from the organization. So um, so this uh, ability to customize the header and footer on the email templates is a huge step in that direction in making sure that content uh, looks and feels like your company or like your brand. I'm going to uh, take a second now and talk about the campaigns app. Uh, and, and again, we're um, with everything we've talked about with, with PowerPoint, um, with scheduled reports and with campaigns, it's all about sending, you know, quote unquote, offline content to folks, right? Um, we'll get into some real time stuff here in just a second. Uh, but the but the campaigns app is is really cool. This is an app that our engineering services team built on Domo. What I love about the campaigns app, well, there, there's a lot of things to love, but you can create as many campaigns as you want to, right? And the campaigns can run on various schedules. We've got all sorts of different scheduling options available for you, but the recipient list of a campaign is a Domo data set. So we've seen all sorts of, of cool examples. I had one that was uh, a customer 
owned and operated a bunch of nursing homes and they wanted to send reporting out to the managers of those to let them know how they were doing uh, relative to their peer group. And they wanted to send a different message based on if their occupancy was really good, really bad, or somewhere in the middle. And so, uh, you know, data flow runs, outputs a list of people that are performing really well, people that are not performing well, um, and, and people that are right on par. And those folks all get a different message that speaks to areas that they're doing well, areas that need improvement. Um, so lots of things like that. But the campaigns app really allows you to um, author email content uh, and make it look however you want to. It gets sent um, from your email domain, right? So you can see here, we've got this off-grid adventures example, right? You can author your subject here. And this is the wuzzy wig, or what you see is what you get editor. You can see we've got some dynamic content, right? Domo distribution too. So that's a dynamic tag. That's pulling a value from a data set. Uh, we've got some rich imagery in here. Um, and you can see we've got some of these brackets that reference Domo content uh, with height and width specified. Over here, you can add cards, you can add merge fields and tags and different things. But author really, really rich email content. It can have links that go wherever you want it to go. Um, this one was written using some HTML. So if you're familiar with that um, and, and you want to do that, you do have the option to, to author HTML or you can use the, uh, the WYSIWYG editor. But it allows you to preview your content, see exactly what that will look like, right? So we can see how our email is going to look. You can see we've got a, a Domo card uh, inserted in there. So it gives you a preview of that. And you can even build um, rich attachments in the same way, right? So you can author an email attachment that gets attached as a PDF. You can, you can include data, right? So if you want to attach a CSV or an XLS file containing contents of a data set, all of those things are possible as well. So if, if your jam is, uh, is emailing content out, uh, a few tips there to make sure that it, it looks and feels like your brand and that your, you know, the campaigns app really allows you to, to automate a lot of that um, and, and do some do some really cool things there. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about now how we can distribute live content. Right. And we'll look at some examples, some live customer examples of how content's being distributed uh, publicly and privately. And how you can how you can distribute uh, both both cards and dashboards, right? What we find with our customers is oftentimes, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, you've got content in Domo that that is valuable to people outside of the organization. They're they're reaching out to you. Uh, they've got questions about content, and and maybe you're coming here to say, hey, how many units have we produced this month, right? Well, if you're like me, after you've answered that question for you know, the third or fourth or 57th time, um, it's really appealing to just give whoever's asking that question access to that card, right? So um, with, with Domo Everywhere, you're allowed to, you know, on either a card or a dashboard, um, click that Domo Everywhere button and you can make that content available either publicly or privately, right? Again, if, if you're not seeing this, reach out. We can get enabled for you on a trial basis, uh, very cool functionality. A couple of examples that I'll share with you live. Let me open a new tab here. Um, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Uh, this is pretty cool. They want to show, hey, where does um, where where are our funds going? Right, we're funding research. Where is it going? They've got some content here. You can see fund grants or grants in the United States, grants around the world. Fairly simple, right? It's just map. I can hover over it. Um, you know, I'm here in Utah. I can see that uh, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation funded $826,628.72 worth of grants um, and even allow for functionality like the ability to drill into it, right? I can see uh, the individuals, the researchers that received the grants, the institution that they're associated with, the number of projects, and it looks like um, JDRF is doing some great things uh, with the University of Utah, right? So again, for JDRF, they wanted to make sure that um, that people could see exactly where those those funds were going, where they were spending that grant money. Um, another example that I'll share with you um, again, just an entity sharing cards, is actually down in Australia. Yeah, hey, this hey is Dan. 
Yeah. Hey, Dan, yeah. I did want to let our viewers know, as you're discussing these, I am putting links uh, to this stuff for, for easy access for folks that are watching. So uh, down in the comments yeah. section below or the live chat during the live stream, you'll be able to, to see those and, and kind of use those for your own resources later if you'd like. Uh, so anything that Dan is kind of showing you, trying to, to be diligent on getting those links in there. So bear with me if it doesn't happen immediately, <laughs> but those links will be down in the comment section. So I just want to let our viewers know that. Thanks, Dan. No, thanks for doing that, Eddie. Um, I, I appreciate you staying on top of that. Um, the New South Wales government here wanted to report some information um, with with their constituents there. Uh, and, and all of this content, these numbers are dynamically powered by Domo. And just wanted to show how you've got some flexibility in the different ways that things can present themselves, right? Um, again, this is all this is all Domo content. Um, here, this will look a little bit more familiar in the sense that it's a Domo card, uh, the ability to, to toggle through different time periods. Uh, this is all about claims data um, with, with the government down there. So uh, a great example of how you can share cards and give people access to those. Now, again, these are public. Anybody can go look at this. Uh, we do also have the ability to, to do it privately to ensure that it's, it's secure content. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Uh, as we look at dashboards, now uh, we talked about how we were sharing cards. You've also got the ability to share an entire dashboard, right? Just like this one that you see here, you got a whole host of options you can choose around whether you want to allow users to export, to maximize, to filter uh, public or private uh, embed types. An example that I'll share with you that, that that's pretty cool. I know we're all sick of talking about the pandemic. I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, please don't slap me. But um, the federal government uses Domo in our interactive dashboards to share information uh, with all of us citizens here in the United States around how the pandemic responsibility, what, what's, what's it stand for? PRAC, it's Pandemic Responsibility Accountability Committee or, or something along those lines. But um, you can come in here and there's lots of examples of, of interactive dashboards, don't know what happened there, um, where you can, it looks like maybe, maybe the, uh, the PRAC has, has taken some of the content down. Don't, don't know what, ah, don't know what's happened there. That's the beauty of doing all this stuff live, but um, check it out. He'll get the link in there. I, I don't know what they've, what they've done with their interactive tools, but um, millions and millions of, of viewers every month visit that content to see uh, how the government's been been spending some of that money. So those are some some uh, public examples. I want to show you some private ones as well. So you understand that it's not just for information you want to put out there openly, uh, but um, content that you may want to share inside of a, a customer portal or something along those lines. Here you can see the Stravello website, right? Um, and I'm going to come here to the partner portal. And I was already logged in, so I'm going to hurry and log out. Um, I'm going to come here to the partner portal and I'm going to log in as we'll go with admin at RDX. Now, what I want to show you here is this dashboard that we've got in our uh, supply chain page here is being displayed live uh, for this user right now. The contents of the content is appropriately filtered. So uh, this particular user uh, is only allowed to see the RDX line of products. And you can see that that, that content is, is filtered there uh, for, for that user. You can see here, we've also got the MTX line, not visible to this person inside of the portal because we've securely filtered it for them. So if you've got certain clients, you've got, you know, if you want to filter down to someone's location, um, you know, however you want to filter that content, uh, you can do that uh, securely. It's with server-side code. This person doesn't have the ability to, to peel any of those filters back. Uh, we've, got, we've got hundreds of clients that are using this today um, at, at big scale, which is, which is really, really neat and fun to see. One uh, plug I'll put in here for it really quick is one of the things folks love is how quickly uh, they can iterate on this content. People see stuff like this and they say, hey, Dan, uh, I don't have any developers. I don't have a development team. Um, you know, how, how, how much effort is it to maintain something like this? People want to see different metrics in the dashboards. They want to see different cards and they, they think it's a heavy lift. I'll show you in real time, you know, if I want to make a change, let's say that, 
you know, I want to move the map over here. Uh, come on, mouse, don't fail me now. There we go. Um, I want to move the map over here. And maybe I even want to apply, you know, different brand colors, right? We talked about brand kit and how we can do some cool things there. Let's maybe apply uh, this, this Broncos or let's go with Cardo antique, a little more drastic, some drab colors there. Um, as the users navigate to that content, I didn't roll any new code. I didn't do anything. And you can see that my maps moved. So my changes to the dashboard are made and my color palettes are applied. So as you've got, uh, once you've got that content in there, which is, which is dead simple, it's really, really easy for you to modify it, whether that's through, you know, applying coloring through the brand kit, whether that's changing the content, right? We, we showed the change to that dashboard. I'm going to go and change that back before somebody gets uh, gets upset with me uh, but but that information propagates down to those external users real quickly so it's a great way um, whether whether you want to put information out there for everybody to see we've got some customers that use this as like a, a lead generation tool they share content on their home page with with how their business is performing or or a customer portal one other, one other plug I'll put in here really quick. Even if you don't have a portal, uh, we can we can provide one for you, right? So, um, you know, we've we've got the ability to, and we don't we don't need to uh, log in and look at that right now. But we do have the ability to to provide a, a portal for you. So if you don't have anywhere for your customers to go and find that content, just know that uh, that we can provide that reporting portal for you. Um, Eddie, do we have any, if we had any questions or anything come in, there's one other experience that I want to show here, but want to make sure that, uh, I'm not keeping an eye on the chat column. So I'm, I'm trusting you're, you're watching that for me. Absolutely. Uh, I haven't seen anything come through so far, which means you are doing an amazing job. <laughs> no one has questions. <laughs> one or the other, right? We'll, we'll go with, we'll go with amazing. Um, one other thing that I wanted to share with you guys is, um, in this experience, in this dashboard, right, it's, it's very interactive. Uh, the user can filter, they can drill, they can sort, they can do all those different types of activities. But there isn't any concept of, of saving the, the content, right? Now, when this user logs in, he's going to see the same information that's prescribed by Stravello. Uh, and he or she is going to see it that same way every time. Um, we do have an experience, and this is more than we can get into at much more detail than, or it's more than we can get into in much more detail than this during our live stream here today. But we've got lots of people here at Doma that would love to talk to you about it. And that is providing uh, an experience where those end users can create their own content and even potentially leverage Domo's connector library to bring in their own proprietary data. And I'll, I'll share when, when those things are appropriate. But let me log in here as James at Top Bikes. And um, this is very similar to what you just saw, right? We've got that same dashboard displayed here. Um, but what James has got the ability to do, right, you'll notice some additional things up here in the header. James has got the ability to edit this dashboard. Uh, he can save a copy of it. He can share it with other Top Bikes employees, right? James is an employee of Top Bikes. And he can even create his own new dashboards, right? You can see here is James DE dashboard. So this is a copy that James made. He hadn't shared it with anybody. It's just here for him. Uh, and he's, you know, removed the background image. Uh, he's got a new pie chart here. But, but the ability to, you know, create new cards, you all know how to do that, um, and create new dashboards, right? In this embedded experience, James doesn't even realize he's using Domo, right? So we've, we've got customers that have done really neat things where they've moved beyond, hey, just sharing a dashboard with folks to sharing a dashboard that serves as a springboard, but also really giving your end customer and user the ability to do deep analyses on, on what you shared, right? They're not just looking at, at what you put together. And this is where we start to see some customers build some, some revenue streams, which is really cool. You've got a ton of value in the data that you've got in Domo. And some of these tools can help you not only get it out there, but, but create uh, new revenue streams. I've got one other layer to this that I want to share, you know, James and Top Bikes, Top Bikes is a valued partner of Stravello. They allow them to get alerts and, and author some content. But there's even a better or richer experience, we'll say, that, uh, that is reserved for the folks at Bike City. 
I'm going to log in here as Carl at Bike City. No last pass. We don't want to save it today. Um, and and this is going to look and feel like you thought. You can see that that uh, Bike City's made a few adjustments to the dashboard, but the net net of the content is is the same. What I want to point out that's unique for Bike City is this data tab, right? So, yes, um, you know you can even unlock the ability for those end customers to come in and bring in new data, leverage our connectors. An example that I'll share with you um, to, to kind of make it real and drive the point home, we've got a, a customer that, um, well, we've, we've got a lot, so I won't cite a specific example, but um, you've got data, you're sharing it with external customers, vendors, and partners, and oftentimes they want to know how they can export that data, right? They want to export it because that data only tells them part of the story, right? In, in this example with Stravello, um, Stravello is sharing with Bike City where their production is, what their QA pass rate is, how many bikes they're building, all that information. But what Stravello doesn't know, they don't know what the demand is for the different models at Bike City's different locations, right? So Bike City has the ability to connect to their CRM, bring in their order data, and ensure that Stravello's production is, is meeting or exceeding the demand at the different bike city locations, right? So when you think about Stravello's data and their supply chain and your data and what it means, it can tell a lot of the story, but, but rarely does it tell the entire story when we're talking about customers, vendors, and partners. So giving them the ability to bring in their own proprietary data, do it securely, we can share all the ways that it is secure and go through all that in a, in a longer conversation. But um, it's, it's, it's very powerful. And again, this is where we see some customers start to build uh, add-on add -on products and new revenue streams and really take that experience of sharing content outside of the organization to the next level. Eddie, that pretty much sums up what I'd put together for the group today. That's great. Um, anything, anything you'd like me to add there or? No, absolutely not. I think, you know, we had talked before and it was like, I may not, you know, maybe a little long, maybe a little short. We're just unsure. These are, <laughs> these are new to us, right? Sure. These, these live yeah. streams and, um, you know, doing them every Tuesday and Thursday. So just so our audience knows, these are happening every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we've got a regular schedule of them. So 2.30 Eastern on Tuesdays, uh, 12.30 Eastern on Thursdays. Uh, these Domo Lunch and Learn. So we're excited to bring on Dan. We have some other folks. Tyson Lewis will be with us on Thursday. Ooh, uh, Tyson's Domo, a good one. Major Domo of Domo. So yeah. we're excited. He knows to, him as good as anybody. Yeah, so we're excited to, to have him uh, coming up in a few days. There hasn't been a ton of comments come in, although da, 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 I say that. Mark Snodgrass on YouTube says, great content, Dan. Any upcoming features for Domo Publish? Uh oh. Mark, maybe <laughs> no, Mark. Publicly available. No, I, love I don't it. know. <laughs> Mark, um, I've 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 sat in the in the conference room right over there with Mark a, a handful of times. Mark, we love you and appreciate you. Um, what the feature that Mark re is referring to there, Domo Publish, is is that ability to to push Domo content from one Domo environment to another whether that other environment is um, another Domo customer or whether it's an environment that you create uh, for your customer to use. There's lots of different ways those come into play, but um, Domo Publish has been a, a big area of focus and investment for us the last five years or so. And Mark, the answer is yes, there's always exciting new features coming. Um, I'll remind you, and, and uh, Eddie can probably put a better plug in for me, but we're about seven weeks away from a cool annual event called Domo Palooza. We got to keep yeah. the powder dry on some new product announcements, but um, but rest yeah. assured that we are continuing to invest in in making sure that uh, that the tooling is is meeting the needs of our great customers like you, Mark. And um, I, I think you're going to like what we have to share at DP twenty three. Yeah, we're really excited. We did make uh, the Domo Palooza announcement on the last live stream. So domopalooza.com, that's where you can find all the information about the next user conference happening uh, at Domo, domopalooza.com. And also, because this is a community content-related live stream, 
I can give you a little bit of a sneak peek. In February, Ooh. we're going to be Ooh. launching our very first virtual meetup on a similar platform. So we're super excited. Be checking your emails for that. We'll be having some, some stuff go out for that very, very soon. But I believe I'm going to tease a guest. The one and only Ben Shine might be joining us Ooh. during that virtual meetup. So uh, if nice. Mark... You may get a little bit of your answer if you come to that uh, if you come to that virtual meetup. So we've got lots of content coming your way. Obviously, like I said, Dan, thank you so much, dude. Appreciate all of this for being a part. Of course. Hey, thanks for having me, and I'm I'm excited to see. You know, I I lurk in the background with weird aliases on on some of the user groups, the dojo, and different things, and so. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what, uh, what you guys, what you guys put together and, and how, how you're branding content and, and getting it out of there, getting it out of Domo and in the hands of, uh, some of these external parties that I know are itching for that data. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. We appreciate it. Join us again on this coming Thursday at 1230 Eastern. As long as I don't get snowed in and there's no longer internet here in the middle of Indiana, uh, a big Midwest snowstorm <laughs> coming. Uh, but Thursday at 1230, we'll be here 1230 Eastern time with Tyson Lewis. And I believe we're going to talk governance. So if that interests you, you don't want to miss that one. You don't want to miss it. Live stream uh, content over Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, go ahead and like all the things, subscribe all the things, and you'll always be notified when we come up with a new video or pieces of content. Dan, thanks again. We appreciate it. Until next time, everyone, we'll have our next Lunch and Learn in a few days, but we want to thank everyone for joining us. Yes, thank you. We'll see you.